This lesson is on an introduction to the properties of logarithms. These are available on your formula sheet, and they're really the last big thing that you look at in this unit, although there's many applications for them. Fairly basic. They're, they're similar to the exponential properties, and you have to have very good command of them. So let's start off by looking at a few uh, illustrations of these properties. First off, to evaluate the following. So if you were given this expression, the log of 8 base 2 plus the log of 16 base 2, we can handle it. We can evaluate each one of those terms separately and then add them together. So let's do that. The log of 8 base 2, remember, means 2 to what exponent is equal to 8. So that you're working kind of backwards trying to find the exponent. And that is 3. So you just replace it straight away with 3. The log of 8 base 2 is equal to 3. The log of 16 base 2, same thinking, 2 to the exponent of 4 is equal to 16. So this is really equal to 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. Okay. Now let's take the same numbers, but look at them a little bit differently. If you were to multiply the 8 by the 16 together and then take the log of it, so the log of 8 times 16 base 2, 8 times 16 is 128. And if you evaluated the log of 128 to the base of 2, 2 to the exponent of 7 is equal to that. So what you're noticing is that we're getting the same answer. So in other words, the log of 8 base 2 plus the log of 16 base 2 is in fact equal to the log of 8 times 16 base 2. And this is an example of the product law, which states this, or goes like this. The log of m times n, base b, is equal to the log of m, base b, plus the log of n, base b. And it means that you can take addition, like we did before, and you can evaluate each logarithm individually and then add them together, the log of m plus the log of n, or you can multiply the numbers together first and then take the log. Both are correct. Now the we're going to look at it both ways, but for us mostly, initially at least, we're going to take logarithms that are being added together and we're going to convert it into multiplication. Let's take a look at another illustration. So let's evaluate these ones. The log of 64 base 2 minus the log of 4 base 2. So here we are subtracting two logarithms with the same base and um, we do each one separately, and the log of 64 base 2 is equal to 6. That means 2 to the exponent of 6 is equal to 64. And then the log of 4 base 2 is just equal to 2. So this becomes 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4. Then, if we were to compare that with this statement, where we divide the logarithms first, and then take the log of it, 64 divided by 4 is 16. So this turns into the log of 16 base 2. Well, that's also equal to 4. So what we're finding is that these, this statement is true. The log of 64 base 2 minus the log of 4 base 2 is equal to the log of 64 divided by 4 base 2. So you can either subtract separately or you can express them as a single logarithm through division. This is known as the quotient law and is stated as such. The log of m divided by n is equal to the log of m minus the log of n. One more main property to consider, and I'll start off again with uh, e evaluating one that, that um, illustrates the property. The log of 3 to the 4 base 3. So we have an exponent within the logarithm. Now, the, probably most people see this and they just take that 3 to the 4 and write it as 81. So this is actually the log of 81 base 3. And the log of 81 base 3 is equal to 4. It means 3 to the exponent of 4 is equal to 81. Compare that with this. So this is the log of 3 base 3, all right, but I've taken the 4, which was the exponent, and I'm, I'm putting it in the front and multiplying it. And then this becomes 4 times, where the log of 3 base 3 is just equal to 1. So we get the same answer. 
Now this property may seem not that useful. Later on it becomes very useful. And it is in this form, this example, the log of 3 to the 4 base 3 is equal to 4 times the log of 3 base 3. So the real rule with it, it has to do with the exponent within the logarithm, and it's called the power law. And the log of m to the exponent of m, n, excuse me, is equal to n times the log of m. So the exponent within the logarithm can be written in the front and then multiplied in. So those are the three properties. Let's look at some other examples of how we might use these to evaluate expressions. So evaluate the following. Number one, the log of 108 base 3 minus the log of 4 base 3. Now, you're thinking when you look at the log of 108 base 3 that there's no way that you can solve that. 3 to what exponent is 108? It can't be done. So we require the properties and we would use the quotient law because they are being subtracted and basically what happens with the quotient law is subtraction can can be turned into division and we express as a single logarithm. You're going to hear that phrase a lot in the next little while. So we are subtracting and that will turn into 108 divided by 4 base 3. And 108 divided by 4, amazingly, is 27. And we can actually handle this one because the log of 27 base 3 just means 3 to what exponent is 27 and that's equal to 3. So this was an unsolvable question prior to this. We could not work it out because we couldn't write 108 or 4 with a base of 3. Let's try another one. Go ahead and try these ones and pause and check your answers. That's fine. Here we're adding two logarithms. Now notice this is base 10 because it's not given to us. So anytime the base is not written, it is base 10. And I'm going to write out that same phrase that we saw previously. Express as a single log. Now on your calculator, you could actually work this one out because base 10 logarithms it will deal with. So if you just went the log of 1.25 plus the log of 80, you'd get the right answer. However, um, I'm going to stick to the properties, the product rule, which goes 1.25 times 80 base 10. 1.25 times 80 is 100. So the log of 100 base 10 is equal to 2. Try another one. Now the, the product rule, or excuse me, the power law is not absolutely required for these ones because many of you will take this 216 to the negative 2 and just write it as 1 over 2, 216 squared and then go 6 to the y is equal to that and you're fine with it. But I'm going to use the power law even so. So the power law, at least the version that I'm going to use of it, you can go both directions with it, allows us to take that negative 2 and multiply it in. So this becomes negative 2 times the log of 216 base 6. And then you got to think 216 is equal to three or to 6 to what exponent? You don't see that one very often, but in fact it is equal to 3. 6 to the 3 is 216. So this therefore is negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Let's try another one. Here we have 3. 
the log of 1 minus the log of 162 plus the log of 2. Now we do eventually learn shortcuts with these, but let's take it through, start at the left and and, uh, and work our way through it. Now we are subtracting two logarithms. They can be simplified as a single logarithm using division. So this is 1 over 162 base 3 and then plus the log of 2 base 3. And then because we're adding logarithms together it means that we can combine them using the product rule. So this becomes the log of base 3 1 over 162 times 2 and 1 over 162 times 2 over 1 is actually reducible to 1 over 81. 3 to the 4 is 81 so therefore 3 to the negative 4 is equal to 1 over 81. So this whole thing is equal to negative 4. Not easy to see based on that original um, expression. Try another one. This one's more complicated. Now we've got three terms going on. We also have a, a big bracket here. Now we can, we can do this a couple ways. You can do the bracket first or you could distribute the negative through. I'm going to do the distribution just for the fun of it. So I will take this negative there and distribute it in to both terms. So we get minus log 5 over 2 base 3 plus log 5 base 3. Now be careful because you're subtracting which means you divide for these first two. Some of you might be tempted to do all three at once and as long as you're careful that's a great idea. So log of 1 over 54 divided by 5 over 2 base 3 plus the log of 5 base 3. I'm throwing in pretty much every step that I can for this one because you could have done this much quicker just by n recognizing that when you divide you actually are multiplying by the reciprocal. Now when you're multiplying those make sure you reduce those fractions so divide by 2 and you'll get 1 over twenty-seven times five if you're really careful with that. So that is going to be one over one hundred and thirty-five base three plus the log of five base three. Now because we're adding two logarithms we can express them as a single logarithm through the act of multiplication. So that's times 5 over 1. And we get another simplification in front of us. This becomes the log base 3, the 5 divide by 5 top and bottom, and it's 1 over 27. And then we have something we can handle. The log of 27, base 3, is 3. So the log of 1 over 27 is negative 3. And there we go. Those are the type of things that you can do with these. Now the next lesson we'll deal with variables and get into some solving of equations, but using these properties throughout. Thank you for your